Hi everyone, I'm Hannah, the museum educator here at the Transcona Museum. Uh, welcome to the second day of Craft With Us and also the second day of Nature Week. So on Monday, we made um, lovely bird feeders, which we actually have hanging outside right now. And today we will be making wind chimes. So for this craft, you're going to need five, uh, five arms lengths um, worth of yarn or string. Uh, you'll need an assortment of beads and you will need scissors to uh, cut the yarn. And also we're gonna be poking holes into uh, the cup, the plastic cup, which is also another thing you will need. Um, and then just paint so you can decorate your cup or even stickers or whatever you wanna decorate your cup with. So we'll just wait a few more moments before getting started. But um, there's announcement that tomorrow our walking tours will be starting. So our history of Transcona walking tour goes from 11 a.m. to 12.15. And then our murals of Transcona tour goes from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. So if you're interested in uh, joining us for a walking tour uh, tomorrow, and they'll be happening every Thursday of July and August. Uh, you can pre-register on our website, which is transconamuseum.mb.ca, and uh, you'll pay when you get here. The price list is on the website. All right, I think we can get started. There we go. Okay, so first we're just gonna start off by painting our cup or decorating it however you like. So I'm just going to mix this up. All right. So for we're making wind chimes for Nature Week this week because Transcona is in Manitoba, obviously, and Manitoba and Transcona and the surrounding areas are a prairie ecosystem. And prairie ecosystems are known for having um, higher winds, usually, and that is because they're, well, prairies, first of all, are enormous stretches of flat grasslands with moderate uh, temperatures, moderate rainfall, and few trees. And the reason why it's usually more windy in prairie climates like Transcona and Manitoba is because there's fewer barriers stopping um, to stop wind from coming down from the Arctic. So like I said before, prairies are just grasslands with um, few trees, so there's no trees or anything um, big like mountains um, to stop the wind from coming uh, straight from the Arctic. So wind chime will be perfect because not only is it pretty to have in your yard or off your house or wherever you might want to put it, uh, off your balcony maybe, um, Lost an AirPod. Um, it'll make your space look very nice. And also it'll be a nice sound for when there's high winds, which seems to happen a lot. <laughs> okay. Now that I painted my cup, and feel free to decorate it however you'd like. Just gonna wipe the paint off my fingers. Now we're going to let that dry and we will move on to the next step. 
Okay, so while that dries, we're going to leave one of your um, five pieces of yarn or string off to the side, and we're not going to put beads on it. But the other four pieces of string, you're going to, uh, I tied about three knots at the end of the string, um, just so uh, the beads are very secure and won't fall straight off the string, um, especially if they're blowing in the wind. So about three knots at the end of your string first, and then you're just going to thread as many beads as you'd like onto the string. Um, I did about 30 beads on each string, but they can be as long as you want, or uh, and you don't even necessarily have to have only four um, beaded strings. You could have six, you could have eight, you could have as many as you want. It's just a matter of putting more holes in your cup, which we will get to once the cup is dry and we have beaded all of these strings. Um, one helpful tip is if you're using yarn to bead the strings, when, uh, when threading the beads onto the string, sometimes the yarn can get frayed at the end and then it makes it really hard to put the bead through it. So I just stuck a piece of tape around the end of the yarn um, so it was a smooth, um, easy way to thread the beads on the string. And make sure to leave quite a bit of string um, left after you've threaded on your beads, just so that you have um, a lot of string to tie it onto the cup and then you can cut the excess away. So you're going to do that four times, six times, however many beaded strings you'd like on your wind chime. So here are some of my other ones. All right. So my cup is still a little bit wet, but that's okay. We will move on to the next step, which is, um, Please be careful when you're doing this. Uh, I have a hole punch that I'm going to use, uh, just a single hole punch, to put the holes on the bottom of the cup where the strings will hang from, like this. But if you don't have a single hole punch or something similar, um, you can use scissors to poke holes in the cup, but just please be careful, make sure uh, there's an adult around to help you just so there's no, um, you know, pointing sharp things in and causing injuries. So um, we'll start with poking the top hole of the cup, which is where the string that it'll hang off of your, the tree or balcony or wherever you're going to hang your wind chime. Um, We'll poke the hole for that string, and that's why we also left a, a blank or just a empty string. So I'm just going to put it right in the middle and push slowly, though. There we go. Careful taking it out. <laughs> okay. So we have that hole, and then I'm just going to poke. So now we have this hole. I'm just going to poke holes around the side uh, or the bottom of the cup. I'm going to poke four holes because I only have four beaded strings, uh, and I'm going to make sure they're evenly spaced around the cup. Go. 
All right. So we have our five holes, one at the top and four around the bottom. We'll start with the uh, handle string. So the easiest way I found to do this was flip your cup like this upside down, or I guess right side up technically if it's a cup, um, and kind of find, find the hole, uh, wrap your string or fold your string in half so you have a little existing loop and kind of find it the hole and work it through the hole and grab it from the other side. There we go. And just kind of work it through. There we go. Work it through and then flip your cup and tie it from the inside just so it's uh, stable and the handle doesn't fall out. Make sure um, you don't accidentally pull the string through again when you're tying the knot. Okay. So the knot is tied. Now we have the handle on our cup. All right, so now that we have the handle, it is time to thread the beaded strings through the holes at the bottom of the cup. So I kept the tape on at the ends of my yarn just so it's also easier to thread through the holes in the cup. Um, so if you're using yarn and did the tape trick, uh, I would suggest leaving the tape on. All right, so I just threaded it through one of the holes and I'm just going to tie a knot. I'll, I'll tie it about three times just to make sure it's really tied on tight. And you can choose to leave as much string on uh, between the beads and the cup as you want. So tied it about three times, okay. So now that our first beaded string is on the cup, I'm just gonna cut away the excess. Okay, on to the next. On Friday, um, that'll be our third and last day of Nature Week. So we will be doing a pipe cleaner flower bouquet um, that um, looks similar to some of the native flowers in Transcona and in Manitoba. So, uh, check that out for sure. Um, you can also still purchase craft kits for Nature Week. Um, they are available on our website. You can also leave the strings at different lengths if you'd like. Actually, I'm going to retie that one just so it's not as long. Um, we also just released today our uh, Railway Week uh, supply list and the for the crafts we will be doing for Railway Week, which is next week, starting on Monday. 
On Monday, we will be doing a toilet paper roll train. On Wednesday, we will be making items that a conductor would use. And on Friday, we will be making a railway lantern. So the craft kits for railway week are also available. Oops, so there we go, we got two strings on. And they are available on our website for $5. And they're for pickup at the museum. All right, I'm tying the third one. If you would like to watch back the craft we did yesterday, which was bird feeders, um, though that video is posted on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, along with our website. So you can also craft along with us even after we do the live video. This live will be posted um, pretty much right after I finish. All right, tying the last one on. Also a reminder that our Kids Quest and our Transcona Quest um, is going on. So you can purchase booklets for $1 on our website and have fun with your family, um, with a date, uh, with friends, exploring the community of Transcona. All right, so here we have a chime. I'm just going to touch up the paint a bit because it wasn't completely dry. Touch up the paint a bit and then our wind chime will be ready to hang outside. All right. So here you have your wind chime made out of three very easy items, just string, a cup, um, and some beads. So I hope you enjoyed this um, episode of Craft With Us. Uh, join us on Friday as, at the same time, 2 p.m., to make a pipe cleaner flower bouquet. Um, and that will conclude Nature Week. But next week, we will be having Railway Week. So make sure to keep an eye on all of our social media, and we will keep you updated. So thanks for joining us.